morning, everybody. Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning. Um, so we're here in this sermon series looking at the fruits of the Spirit. If you've been here the last couple of weeks, we've just been going through the list of the fruits of the Spirit, these attributes and, and things that God promises will be part of our lives if we are keeping in step with the Spirit. So I know you've been hearing it week after week, but turn with me again to Galatians, um, Galatians 5, verse 22. We'll hear what God has to say one more time. Repetition is good for learning, right? Who shares in the audience? <laughs> Galatians 5 verse 22 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against, no such, against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Since you live by the Spirit, Let's keep in step with the Spirit. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for these words, for this seemingly simple yet profound list of, of attributes and promises. And we ask that you teach us from them this morning. Teach us more about who you are and who we are as your children. In your name we pray. Amen. So, Chris and Jeremy and John and I sat down on a Tuesday afternoon staff meeting and kind of laid out this sermon series, and I was kind of excited about it. You know, I, I like lists, so this kind of fits that little part of my brain, and I, I liked that we could just go through and look at each, each fruit of the Spirit in turn. And then we got to scheduling it, and I got goodness. And the Bible is good and beautiful and useful, and I kind of felt like I got the shaft for a second <laughs> with goodness. Goodness is just so vague. What is good? You know, we say be good. What does that mean? I was jealous that John got to do love and joy and peace, these beautiful sweeping themes throughout scripture. Those are like a preacher's dream to talk about those things because there's so many things you could do. Last week, Chris got to talk about kindness and it fits with so much that we're looking at together. We're doing the walk the walk challenges, which a lot of them have been kind of random acts of kindness for people, letting God show through in our kindness. So there's a lot in the life of our church to glean from, and then I got goodness. And I I really, I had coffee with John on Friday, and I was like, I have no idea what to say on Sunday. This was two days ago. <laughs> I said, I've been working on this all week, and I have no clue what to say. So I did what all good seminary trained pastors are supposed to do, and I went to my Greek Bible. And I thought, well, if I find the Greek word for goodness, I'm sure in the translation there's something really meaningful. So I looked it up, and I learned that the Greek word used here is agathosune, which comes from the word agathos, which means, and I quote, ready? Positive moral qualities of the most general nature. <laughs> Even, even my Greek let me down. <laughs> I had no idea what to say. So I started trying to think throughout the last couple days, okay, when we talk about things that are good, what do we talk about? So I looked around my, my house where I was sitting and I saw my dog and I thought of all the times I say, good dog. When I say good dog, what am I saying? And sometimes it's because he's just being really cute and I want to pet him, so I say good dog as I pet him. Sometimes I say he's a good dog because he's not biting Nora while she grabs at his paws and pulls on his ears <laughs> and all of these things. Sometimes I say, good dog, as he obeyed a command. And I was thinking about this, and I, I don't think that that's what God wants for us, to be an obedient dog. I don't think that's what our life of faith is all about. So that, that didn't help. So then I, I thought, okay, what else could, could good mean? And I pictured the times that my parents would drop me off with a babysitter or leave me with my older siblings, and they went off and they would say, okay, Jana, be good. <laughs> and so what, what are they saying? When they say be good, of course I was never bad, of course, but they were, they were saying, you know, don't misbehave, right? Be on your best behavior. Don't be crying and fighting and throwing things and not sharing. Just be on your good behavior, right? That's what we say, be good to a child. And so, okay, that's kind of getting somewhere. You know, God has things he wants us to do. There are kind of rules and laws in our faith, but it's so much more than that, too. Right? Our faith is more than just about not misbehaving. Our faith is about a, a life and a relationship. And so that wasn't much help either. 
And so I tried to think of what else good could mean, and I thought of a compliment. You know, you could say, Dale, you're really good at singing, or Dave, you're really good at playing guitar. And what do we mean when we say those things? Well, we mean that you've got skills, and you know, I can tell that you've been doing this for a while, and when you do your music, it's nice to listen to, and I like it. And so there's, you know, there's something in that too, maybe. God, God gives us skills and talents, and he wants us to use them. But again, I think there's something deeper here. And finally, I was, I was playing with my little five-year-old buddy named Kai, um, who likes to play good guys versus bad guys. Right, and he's, he's, we're always the good guys together. We get to be a, a superhero team together and we have to fight the bad guys or protect the house from the bad guys or keep Nora away from the bad guys and all of these things. And I thought good versus evil. Now maybe we're getting somewhere. Good versus evil. Maybe this fruit of the spirit has something to do with this constant battle between good and evil in our lives and in our world. So I thought, okay, Greek. And you let me down once, now don't do it again. And I went back and thought, okay, the word says it's very general, but what if I look at how the word is used throughout scripture? So this is what I found. In Luke 18, verse 18 and 19, a ruler says to Jesus, good teacher, agathos teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus replies, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Okay, so agathos, goodness, is something that God has. In Matthew 12, verse 34, Jesus rebukes his listeners, saying, You brood of vipers. He was not a happy man at that point. He said, You brood of vipers, how can you speak of good things, agathos things, when you are evil? There it is, good versus evil. How can someone evil even speak good things? In John 5, verse 29, Jesus talks about, he's talking about the final resurrection when Jesus will come again and we'll all be raised with him to eternal life. And he says, those who have done what is good, what is agathos, will rise to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. Again, good versus evil. Good opposed with evil. And in Romans 7, verse 18 to 19, Paul laments, For I know that nothing good, nothing agathos dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good that I want. There it is again. I do not do the good that I want, but the evil that I do not want is what I do, says Paul. Again, there's good opposed to evil, this struggle between good and evil. I could go on and on with Bible passages how it uses this word, agathos, good versus evil. This fruit of the spirit, this agathos, is opposing evil. That's what goodness is about. It's more than just not misbehaving. It's more than just being skilled at something or having a talent. It's more than being a cute little basset hound who I like to pet. It's, it's opposing evil. Goodness is that which opposes evil. Goodness, when given to us by the Holy Spirit, is deeper and profound than just what it may seem, even what our Greek Bibles might tell us. And scripture shows that goodness can have a purpose. It can be an intention, an act. In Acts 10, verse 38, it says that Jesus went about doing good. Went about doing agathos. Jesus went about opposing evil opposing sin and hurt and death in our world. And if you look at what Jesus did throughout his life and his ministry, he was healing people, and he was performing miracles and giving food. Scripture says that Jesus came to give life and give it abundantly, and that's what his miracles were all about. He was taking the, the effects of sin in our world, death and sickness and and. Um, you know, being, being opposed to in, in the community, all these things that are part of sin, and he was opposing them. He went about doing good. That's what goodness is, goodness that opposes evil, goodness as an intentional act meant to dispel the darkness in our world. Goodness is light in a dark world. In John 1, it says, talking about Jesus, that in him was light, and there's shown the light of the world, and he's shown the light throughout the nations and into the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. 
goodness is light, overcoming darkness, dispelling the darkness in our world. This is what we've been given through the Holy Spirit. Jesus' goodness, excuse me, when Jesus went about doing goodness, it was meant to dispel evil. It was meant to set right all of the things that had gone wrong in their society, in our world, in our human nature. When he did miracles, he wasn't just doing a cool party trick. He was, he was opposing evil and showing a little bit of what it will look like when he comes again and sets all things right and makes all things new. That's what goodness is about. When we live life in the Spirit, our lives bear this fruit of the Spirit. When we keep in step with the Spirit, as it says in in Galatians, these are the things that will flow out of our lives. Love and joy and peace and goodness that opposes evil, that dispels darkness. That's what it's all about. These are the effects of the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. And one of these fruits is goodness, this way of living and acting that seeks to set right the things that have gone wrong in our world, to dispel the darkness. What a beautiful thing, this gift that our lives have the opportunity to dispel the darkness around us, that we get to be a light that the darkness cannot overcome. It made me think about all the conversations we've been having in our roundtable Sundays, where we've been looking at what it means to be disciples who make disciples. What better way to dispel darkness than to share the light of Christ with others? What better way to set right what is wrong in our world than than by pointing others to the one who is goodness? What better way to do that? It's exciting that we get to have those conversations. So this morning I was getting ready to try and come up with some ways that we could practice goodness and do this practically. And I realized that that's the grace of the fruit of the Spirit. If we're walking with the Spirit, our lives will be goodness. If we're walking in the Spirit, the Spirit will be working in us and through us and just in spite of us. And our lives will be dispelling the darkness. So our job is to walk with the Spirit, not to practice goodness. Our job is to walk with the Spirit and let God's goodness flow through us. That's the gift. We, like Jesus, if we're walking with him, we'll be all about doing good. We'll be going about doing good, just like he was. Shortly after the passage we read this morning in Galatians 6, it says this. Galatians 6, verse 9 and 10 says, Let's not become weary in doing good. There it is again, agathos, doing good. For at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. That's our job, is to just not give up, to keep letting the Spirit flow through us, to live in ways that don't block the Spirit's work in us, but to let, to let the Spirit empower us to go about doing good as Jesus did. Don't give up doing good. Don't get tired dispelling the darkness. Whenever we have the opportunity, let's act in ways that set right the effects of sin and evil and darkness all around us. Let's go about doing good, just as Jesus did. In 1 Peter 2, verse 9, the Bible keeps closing on me. It says this, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who calls you out of darkness into his wonderful light. God's given us this gift that we together are his people, his chosen people, and he's called us out of the darkness and into his light so that we can do good. We can be goodness and continue to dispel that darkness around us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen?